Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex. Now, Alex is going to be with us in the second hour, and we've got a lot to talk about, especially about the TSA. You know, it was really the TSA is where I found Alex, believe it or not. Um, it was his tireless pursuit of what they're doing, which is something that he's basically followed by himself. And uh, so we're going to be talking about now the latest territorial overreach of the TSA uh, when Alex joins us in the second hour. In the third hour, we're going to be joined by Lord Moncton, and we're going to talk about global warming, and we're going to talk about junk science. And if that's not a topic that interests, interests you, let me talk to you about how much that's going to cost you. If these carbon taxes that are being proposed go through, it's estimated to be $25,000 a year per person. That's a year, each year. That's the size of the TARP bailout, but that's being done every year if that goes through. And who's that money going to be paid to? Well, it's going to be paid to some private corporations that uh, Al Gore and other uh, elitists have created. Uh, you're going to pay an indulgence to them for every kind of activity that you do because every kind of activity that you engage in is going to have some kind of a carbon print. And so you're going to have to pay them to do that. Why should you pay them? Well, it's the same logic that exists with the Federal Reserve that was created uh, about 100 years ago. Its anniversary is coming up uh, this December. Why should we have to pay the Federal Reserve for them printing money? But uh, we do pay that private corporation. And now with this carbon tax scheme, this is something that is far greater than any bankster scheme has ever been before. They're putting this on steroids. They're going global with it. And they're going to put a TARP bailout every year on you if you don't stop it. And it also has implications in terms of not just money that you directly pay, but things that you don't necessarily see right away. You wonder why your utility bill is going up, doubling, tripling in many cases? Well, it's because they're shutting down power plants. Why are they shutting down power plants? Because of the junk science of global warming. So we're going to talk to Lord Moncton about that in the third hour. Now, the breaking news today, of course, that everybody is talking about is Detroit going bankrupt. Now, this is something that has been there for quite some time. Uh, this has been on the horizon. <clears throat> but actually, it just uh, came out yesterday officially that they're going bankrupt. Now, this is something that we were told would never happen. We've got a clip ready. I want you to hear it from the horse's mouth. But we refuse to throw in the towel and do nothing. We refuse to let Detroit go bankrupt. I bet on American workers and American ingenuity, and three years later, that bet is paying off in a big way. Another success. <laughs> Another pledge. Of course, he also pledged to uphold and respect the Constitution, right? Uh, we haven't seen much uh, done about that either. But what is happening to Detroit is something that's been going on for a long time. Here's uh, from PrisonPlanet.com. Here's 11 depressing stats about Detroit. Their population has plunged 63% since 1950, down 26% just since 2000. Even as the population fell that 63% since 1950, however, the city workforce only went down by 40% because you can't fire union workers. Detroit now has the highest violent crime rate of any large city. So you look at these, these uh, problems, just the fact that you've got an over-heavy city government. Look at what's happening with the federal government. Even as the rest of the country is suffering under an economic malaise, under a recession, under a depression, we have federal government employees exploding. Same thing that's happening with, uh, de happened with Detroit, although, uh, you know, th this, this major imbalance between federal employees, between government workers and the uh, people who support them. And then look at what happens with violent crime. If we see the same kind of gun control that they have in the northern states, in Detroit and elsewhere, we're going to see that kind of crime rate explode to the rest of the country. Detroit is a weather vane for the rest of the country. Well, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We've got some exciting news. We've got Alex Jones coming up and Lord Moncton. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex. Now, Alex is going to be joining us in the second hour. We're going to be talking about some new encroachments from the TSA. 
just unbelievable. It never stops, and it will never stop until we stand up in mass and oppose it. But Alex has talked quite a bit about the Trayvon Martin, uh, George Zimmerman case. We have black leaders who are now standing up and speaking out. We've had uh, Bill Cosby say this is not about race. And we have this from Charles Barkley. There are very few people who have a pure heart when it comes to race. Uh, racism is wrong in any shape, form. There are a lot of black people who are racist, too. I think sometimes when people talk about race, they act like only white people are racist. There are a lot of black people who are racist. And I don't like when it gets out there in the media, because I don't think the media has clean hands. I think you're right. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm yeah, glad you made that yeah, point. Charles. I don't think the media has clean hands. Yeah. And like I said, I feel sorry that young kid got killed. But just judging by the evidence, I don't think that guy should have went to jail for the rest of his life. But something happened bad that night, obviously. Yeah, I like what one of the jurors said. They said they both should have walked away. Yes, that's good. Um, and if there's a shadow of a doubt... Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's pull to that. He goes on to say, <clears throat> he says, Zimmerman was wrong to pursue. He was racial profiling. And he said, uh, I think Trayvon Martin, God rest his soul, I think he did flip the switch and started beating the, hell, uh, the uh, H out of Mr. Zimmerman. It was just a bad situation. Like I said, the main thing I feel bad for, it gives every black and white person who is a racist a platform to vent their ignorance. He said he watched the trial closely. He said a lot of people have an agenda. And I think that's a key point. I think he was right. I think there was some profiling going on there. But it's very much like uh, you have a, uh, let's say you have a husband and wife, and the wife is being passive aggressive with the husband, really pushing all of his buttons. And at some point, he turns around and starts to attack her. At that point, she has a right to defend herself. So even though Zimmerman may have been doing something that we all despise, that was uh, racial profiling, once he is attacked by Trayvon Martin, as wrong as he may have been to attack him on that, he has a right to defend himself. That's why you needed a jury. That's why a jury needed to make that kind of nuanced decision. That's why it's wrong for the media to convict people, just like they're doing with Zokar Zarnaev. You know, they're convicting him. All of the, all the uh, complaints now about this Rolling Stones magazine cover are just amazing because they're focusing on the fact that he looks too nice. Not about the fact that the Rolling Stones has identified him as the bomber. He's not had a trial yet. They just had the first arraignment, and he said he was not guilty. Let's uh, call him the alleged bomber at the very most. But uh, getting back to this Zimmerman thing, we've got, like I said, black leaders that are speaking out, and uh, Alex is going to be talking to some of them. Coming up on Sunday, he's got Pastor Manning, and then on Monday, he has Larry Elder. And of course, we've also talked to uh, Larry Pinckney. What I believe is behind this, and I think it's very easy to see that the government has an agenda. They don't want you talking about Benghazi. They don't want people talking about the IRS, or they don't want people talking about the NSA spying on everybody. It's much easier to pick one case and divide people against each other, get people all worked up. So they're talking about that only. It's really COINTELPRO. It's what we were talking about with Larry Pinckney, who used to be with the Black Panthers. He's very well aware of how the government infiltrates groups, how they divide and conquer. You know, the Black Panthers, the original Black Panthers, didn't really get to be dangerous until they started pulling in people from all different racial groups. At that point, the FBI shut them down. But of course, now we have the new Black Panthers who put out a $10,000 bounty on the head of Zimmerman. And nothing is being done about that. Just as nothing was done by the Eric Holder Justice Department when the new Black Panthers were using intimidation to keep people away from polling places. Clearly, it's a COINTELPRO operation. Clearly, it suits the agenda of the government. And we see now also that this is what it's perhaps about as well as distracting people. It's about the Second Amendment again, trying to get that back into the spotlight. The Justice Department has now placed a hold on George Zimmerman's gun, even though he's been found not guilty. And let's understand, too, this is something when we talked about uh, with Larry Pinckney, not guilty doesn't mean that Zimmerman is innocent. Nobody is really innocent. And he may have had very impure motives of what happened, but he was not guilty of murder is what the jury found. And as Obama said, only thing I've agreed with that he said is that we have to stand by what the jury found. But they're using this. Nevertheless, the Obama administration is using this to go after guns, to go after the Second Amendment, to go after Zimmerman's guns specifically. So here you have a situation where even though people are putting a $10,000 bounty on his head, even though you've got T-shirts being sold with that, even though you've got a Facebook page sold with that, 
not only does the government not go after these people, not even talk to these people, but now they withhold his gun, Zimmerman's gun, which he is not guilty. He is allowed to have that back by Florida law, but don't expect the Florida uh, local officials to give that back to him to stand up for his rights because they've been working on this uh, to basically uh, this kind of a um, subversion of justice for quite some time. If you look at what happened with the prosecutor's office, they actually fired the director of IT this last Saturday after the uh, verdict was announced. They actually fired him and said that it was for withholding evidence. Well, actually, he wasn't the one withholding evidence. He noticed that they had released about 2,900 pieces of evidence and there was over 4,000 pieces of evidence. He started going through the chain of command. And as he got uh, the cold shoulder, nobody wanted to talk about this, he went public with it. They suspended him back in May. And then when the verdict was announced this last Saturday, they fired him. And incredibly, the person from the attorney general's office said that uh, he was the one holding back evidence. I don't find that at all to be credible. Not if he's going up through the chain of command saying all the evidence hasn't been turned over. And then we had this revelation from the defense team. They said that they had gotten pictures. Some of the pictures that they got were black and white pictures. Now, why would they be black and white pictures? Well, they don't want the blood on Zimmerman's head to show, right? They saw these black and white pictures and they thought, wait, these are cell phone pictures. Cell phones don't take black and white pictures. So they asked the uh, attorney general. They asked the attorney general's office to release the original pictures, and that was back in January. And they did not get those pictures until the beginning of June. And when they did, they still were not full color pictures. They were kind of some pastel pictures. So the prosecution team has an evidence tampering history here. And then they not only fire the whistleblower, but they say he's not a whistleblower. He's the one who is actually holding back evidence. Not credible at all, but I don't believe that the local attorney is going to uh, be standing up for Zimmerman's rights. They didn't stand up for his right to a uh, due process. I don't think they're going to stand up for his right to the Second Amendment as well. Now, some new revelations have come out in the IRS scandal. There are some congressional hearings that are still going on about that. You haven't heard anything about it because everybody's been talking about the Zimmerman case. But uh, this is from Peggy Noonan. And she said that when the scandal broke two months ago in May, the IRS leadership in Washington claimed that this is all about local Cincinnati people that are off the rails, that were going out. But now we have some testimony from some of those lower people who saying that they were actually getting orders from higher up. Now, this is very significant because if you remember, the articles of impeachment against Richard Nixon were originally, one of the articles was about using the IRS against political enemies. And that's exactly the same thing that the Obama administration is doing, except for one difference. The breadth and the scope and the depth of it is far greater than anything Nixon ever did. But uh, it's going to be interesting as you see these people pitted against uh, each other. Now, that, you know, these people who were thrown under the bus by the higher ups are now saying, are now testifying to Congress uh, Michael Sato, head of uh, the uh, investigation unit, spoke to investigators and told them that Lois Lerner made an unusual decision. Now, she's the one in Washington. She's the one who uh, basically threw these other people under the bus, the higher up. She said Tea Party applications would undergo additional scrutiny, a multi-layered review. So they're specifically targeting their political enemies. They were very concerned because people moved in mass against... Uh, they were against the TARP, against the bailouts, and they started forming these Tea Party organizations. The government was very concerned about that. They knew they had to nip that in the bud. And one of the ways that they used to stifle political dissent has always been to attack people with the IRS. And I find it interesting, this article from Russia, where even the Russians are afraid of the masses when they get together and uh, demonstrate. They had a Russian opposition leader, has now been freed on bail, as protests rattle the Kremlin. This is from Reuters. And as we talked about yesterday, when the East Germans took back their freedoms from the Stasi, they did it by marching in mass. They started in the churches and then they moved to the fences where the guards were shooting people who tried to cross over from East Germany to West Germany. And finally, when they came in masses, when they moved in the churches, from inside the churches to the wall, the guards stood down. They would not fire on the masses. 
Even the Stasi fears people. That's why it's important for us to do something. That's why it's important for us to not take these encroachments on our freedoms that we see from the NSA, from the IRS, from others. It's important for us to not to take those things lying down. And I think there's been a real sea change in the last 20 years. I know when I was involved heavily with the Libertarian Party in the early 90s, and we would talk about ending the IRS, and everybody, the journalists would just laugh at us. Of course, they probably would still laugh at you. But now we have Senator Ted Cruz talking about that. And people aren't laughing. People are getting behind him. We need to get behind him in that effort. You know, if we can't impeach Obama, maybe we can get rid of the IRS. Maybe we can offer that to him as kind of a plea bargain. Okay, we, we won't throw you out. You throw out the IRS, we'll let you stay for a little while longer until uh, the next scandal comes along. But uh, even in Russia... Even in Russia, when they get an opposition leader and they arrest him, if enough people show up, they get scared. And so they've released uh, this fellow from jail. Now the CIA is back in the news, something very similar to Operation Gladio. And we're going to talk about that right after the break, so stay tuned. I think you're going to find this very interesting. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. 